Thank you for coming. Um, uh, a big thank you to all our visitors and thank you very much, Julia. My name is um, Yan Zhang and I work as lecturer in linguistics. Uh, I teach uh, for this undergraduate program, I teach introduction to linguistics and um, well, we're having a quite a large number of students for this year, it's, um, almost reaching 40. And um, I uh, will also take part in some other modules like um, semantics and also I supervise um, independent study mm -hmm. projects. Thank you very much, Julia. Okay. Uh, how about Chris next? Okay, thank you, Julia. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Lucas. I'm a senior lecturer in Arabic linguistics. Um, I studied uh, Arabic at SAAS, and uh, I also, as part of my Arabic degree at SAAS, I did, I did some linguistics. It was actually taught uh, by Lutz Martin, who uh, <laughs> will introduce himself <laughs> next. And uh, Lutz is such a good teacher, and linguistics is such a good subject that uh, I knew that was what I wanted to do from then on. Um, so yes, I, I, I teach uh, in the linguistics department um, uh, where I've, I, I've taught um, historical linguistics and um, uh, linguistic typology in the past. Uh, and I also teach um, Arabic, various modules in, in Arabic. Okay, let's. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it, it takes, takes me back a while. Um, general linguistics, I think it was in, in those days. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Lutz Martin. I'm uh, half in, you know, I used to be half in the linguistics department and half in the African languages and cultures department. That now, of course, we all merge in one big family. But, uh, but my interest, I and mean, that reflects my interest. So I work on linguistics, mainly on the structure and meaning side, so syntax, semantics, pragmatics. Um, and, and on African languages. And um, I'm teaching this year, I think, Languages of the World, which is a, a big first year module. It's really nice. I think, yeah, I think last year we even had more, I think we had like almost 60 students because we are, we are joined by a number of, of language degree students. And it's really a nice module. It was the first time we taught it last year. So this, this year will be the second time. And I, I really enjoyed it last year. And then um, I'm also like Chris, I'm teaching historical linguistics so that we, you know, to alternate there a little bit. Um, and I'm also teaching a module called Language Identity in Society in Africa, which has a particular Africa focus and links actually quite a bit with the with the work Julia is doing in she has a module language society and communication, which I think we come to it in a moment. Um, so yeah, great. Uh, welcome everyone. And I'm you know, happy to answer questions in a little bit. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any other teaching colleagues here? Or um, should I talk about myself? Um, and yeah, no, normally this talk is given by Maria Flawaki, who is the uh, BA Kabina, but she has to teach at this at this time. So um, I volunteered to do it this time. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Julia Salabank, as I said, um, and my specialism is sociolinguistics and endangered languages. We focus more on endangered languages at the MA level. So at BA level, I, I teach, as Lutz said, a module called Language Society and Communication, which is another very popular module. Um, and it attracts a lot of students from other, other um, disciplines as well. So we look at, we're, um, one of the features I'm gonna talk about is the interdisciplinarity of, of our linguistic study here at SOAS, because our, our linguistics degree is a joint degree. So you, you, you can only redo it in combination with, with another discipline. Yeah, so I, I, I look at language and society, um, how language relates to different um, context in which language is spoken and how language changes according to um, what context it's in um, um, to do with things like gender, age, region, uh, class and so on. Um, and also I'm very interested in, in, in idea, um, notions of language and identity um, uh, and, and um, particularly language policy and language planning. So all this a little bits of this come, in, come into my module as well. Anyway, so, um, okay, I'm now going to share my screen and give you a presentation, um, a, a bit more detail about what we do here. And then, as I said, um, very welcome to 
uh, um, to ask questions at the end, preferably. Um, if you want to, you can type questions to the chat if you don't feel happy about, about talking yourselves. Or is that, we can either read them out or we can ask you to talk, talk to your own question as well. Okay, so here we go with the screen sharing. Um, share. Okay, here we go. Uh, slide two. Um, Yes, okay, linguistic at service, welcome. Let's uh, reduce that a bit. Yes, so um, welcome to the School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics, um, which is now the home of the linguistics department at SOAS. Um, so what's different about studying at SOAS? Um, well, first of all, um, we had our, our 100th anniversary just a few years ago, um, and we've been focusing specifically on scholarship uh, regarding Africa and Asia, therefore for over 100 years, and we teach over 30 languages. Um, and of course, languages and linguistics have a very close relationship. Um, we have a national research library. It gets government funding because it is a, a library of international importance. Um, and we also actually are the oldest linguistics department in the UK, founded in 1932. But of course, what we teach has developed over the years, and so we keep, keep track of, of latest developments too. But we're also grounded in, in this long history of, of research and teaching in linguistics. We have students and staff from over 130 countries. Um, so it's a very diverse environment, and this is really important about SOAS. Um, and we're in a really vibrant part of London as well. Um, and so we have expertise in many of the world's key regions and languages, in including those which have the highest linguistic diversity. I'll come back to that later. And we have, as I said, a number of degree combinations available. So we have two main programs uh, for BA students. Firstly is simply the BA in linguistics. Um, the focus is mainly on the, the, the key areas of linguistics, formal linguistics, I'll come back to those later. And we have a BA in linguistics with a focus on translation studies. And both of these can be combined with uh, a whole range of uh, uh, other subjects such as Arabic, Chinese, development studies, East Asian studies, Japanese, Korean, uh, languages and cultures, which is um, the generic um, um, program for the whole department. Uh, you can also um, combine linguistics with politics, as my own field is particularly interested in that, and with social anthropology. Um, so, as I said, the BA in linguistics, both with and without the translation pathway, um, together with another degree, the, the linguistics part of that focuses mainly on structural and theoretical linguistics, the core foundations of linguistics. We also have um, quite a relevant focus on language and society. Um, as I said, I teach that module. We also have historical linguistics. We are, I think, one of the few places in London to actually develop over time. Um, and language identity in Africa, as Lutz mentioned already. Uh, we do focus specifically on the languages of Af Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Um, but we do have additional expertise amongst the, the staff in the department in various other languages, such as European, Australian and American languages. So we have um, a big, uh, a wide range of examples that we can draw on in our, in our teaching. And as I mentioned, we are the UK's oldest linguistics department. You have to go banging on about that too. So what do we study in linguistics? Um, we focus, as I said, uh, uh, on, on basic structures of, 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 of language. Um, so, uh, first of all, through sounds um, and the um, um, discipline, subdisciplines of linguistics, which study sounds are phonetics, phonology, and prosody. So phonetics are the individual sounds in, in words and how we make them, how we produce them with, in our mouths. Phonology is more about sounds in their context within, within, within words and within a, a whole utterance or sentence. Um, and prosody is, is how your intonation, how your speech goes up and down depending on various aspects. And this is, this is different for different, different languages. Um, 
And then we look at the grammar of language. It is not in any order. We do all of these all through your, 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 whole, your whole career at SOAS. Um, so we look at the grammar and structure of how languages work, um, looking at the morphology, that's the shape of words, uh, word classes, how, that's how words behave. Um, and how they might change uh, to, according to what part of, of speech they are they're in, part of a sentence they're in. I'm trying to be kind of simple about this. Um, and syntax, which is the word order, um, how, how, uh, um, and that can tell you a lot of things. All of these together can tell you a lot of things about um, what, what someone is trying to say and how they're trying to say it. And then we have um, um, meanings. Of, of the word semantics. Uh, you may have heard the word semantics in, in, in a more kind of lay sense. Uh, yes, semantics is, is particularly about the meanings of, of, of words. Um, and pragmatics is how that relates to, to the how, how, how words are used. Um, and that kind of overlaps with, with the use of, of language, um, which is also another sub area of linguistics, um, particularly relating to my area, sociolinguistics. Um, so pragmatics is part of that, and things like politeness studies, um, how we get over what we want to say. Um, discourse um, can be looked at in various ways. Uh, discourse um, in principle is language above the sentence level of over say a paragraph or a longer text, uh, but it also to do with how people construct their identities through 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 talk and through language, and and language in the social world. How how um, as I mentioned earlier, how language might change or how people might express themselves in a particular way depending on on the context in which they're speaking. So overall, what we're interested in is how languages work. And for those of us obviously who went into linguistic as a career, this is this, we find this totally fascinating. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure of the program. Um, you have to take a certain number of modules, and in, as this is a, a, a joint degree, those modules will be divided between linguistics and whatever other um, subject you're taking. Um, so this is um, we, we only need to have enough credits for a, for a half degree in linguistics itself. So you have core modules, ones you have to take and pass on, uh, if you uh, if you if you're to progress to the next year. Um, but you also have a, a, a number of options. The first year, though, is is has what we call a guided curriculum. So um, we, we we if you like take the decisions for you, so that you have uh, the basics of knowledge that you can use to, to possibly use take more options in in years two and three. So as Jan mentioned, we have introduction to linguistics, um, tells you um, what you need to know in order to understand the other modules. Languages of the world, which is the one that looks teaches. Sounds, grammar and meaning in language, which is a little bit more about, about uh, what I was talking about earlier, the, 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 the basic building blocks of language. Um, that's taught by Maria Floraki, who can't be here today, unfortunately. And then we have language learning and writing, which is an introduction to um, how to do academic work um, in, in language study. And that's a, a kind of um, academic studies um, module, which is something that um, is very useful when you when you do more assessments later, assignments later in your academic career. Okay, so going on to link year two. In the purely linguistics pathway, um, you will take the core modules, approach to syntax, introduction to research, and meaning and interpretation. Um, and these go into the uh, um, topics that you were studying in year, year one in, in more specific detail. Uh, if you're doing a translation pathway, you that then you will then also or you you then start to focus more on translation itself, introduction to translation theory, um, introduction to research, which is common across across all of our um, um, subjects, um, and then particularly focusing on on how to translate cultures. A culture is a really really core uh, uh, element of translation. To what extent can you translate cultures? Uh, to what extent uh, are our languages translatable? Is a, is a big, really big theme in translation studies. And then understanding text, because a lot of translation focuses on, on literary translation. Then, of course, you have options. We'll come back to the options later. In year three or uh, year four, um, because if you're doing a a language in, 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 
in the, uh, at the same time as linguistics, you, you, you will probably do a year abroad as part of your degree. So year four will be your final year or your final year will be in your fourth year. Um, in um, the, sorry, um, water. Um, if you're doing the linguistics pathway, you will do something called advanced topics in linguistics. Um, and that, um, to a certain extent, can, can be a choice of yours and also of the person who's teaching that at the time. And then you can do an independent study in linguist, uh, 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 independent study project in linguistics. And that is now compulsory for uh, pure linguistics uh, students. And that gives you the opportunity to do a, to spend the whole year um, doing original research or doing a little bit of original study um, or perhaps some lit literature based or some desk based study on a, a, a topic which has which has grabbed you something which you found really interesting over the first two or three years of your of your academic career. And for translation pathway, because you you had more um, core modules in, in the previous year, the, the, really the, the, own, the main um, core module in year, year three or year four, as it, as it may be, will be translation technology, which is um, a very useful uh, module for people who are intending to go on to do translation as a, as a career. And that's this is kind of up-to-date stuff about the latest uh, technological advances in translation and, and the tools that you can use to help with your translations. Again, plus options. So we have two lists of options, list A and list B, and these are the ones that we kind of recommend to students who are doing linguistics, but of course there are also op open options throughout the university and options, which are, and, and options which are available as part of your other subject as well. So uh, as I mentioned, there's uh, language society and communication, which is what I teach, meaning interpretation. Um, I think taught by our colleague Aisha Balkadi, um, to come back to that, if, uh, I'll, I'll check that if you like. Um, introduction to Arabic dialects, which is taught by Chris. Um, translation theory is an option for those who are doing straight linguistics. And philosophies of language is, an, is another option related to linguistics, which is taught by our colleagues in um, the history, philosophy and religions department. And then in the final year, you have options such as historical linguistics. It's a final year one because you need to know a certain amount of linguistics to in order to, to follow that. Linguistic topology, likewise, and your independent study project. Um, that's if, if you're um, not taking that as a compulsory, as a, sorry, as a core module, then you can, uh, you can do it as an option if, if you so wish. And all of us, all of us who, who have been talking to you and all of our other colleagues are available uh, to, to, to supervise independent study projects in linguistics. And if, you're inter if, if you do have something which is specifically interesting to you, uh, please, please talk to us um, at an early stage and we can help you to guide the development of your research project. We also um, have, as I mentioned, a large number of languages that we teach SOAS. Um, as well as the major world languages, such as uh, um, Chinese and Japanese and Arabic and Korean as, uh, and Japanese, um, we also have um, what are called strategically important and vulnerable languages, uh, which is a government category uh, for languages which are taught less often, um, but which are, are of, of particular interest or particular importance in the world. And you can see these um, range from Amharic to Vietnamese in terms of, of, of the English alphabet. Oh, and Zulu as well, uh, A, to, A to Z even. Okay, um, so, and, and anything from Perki, Persian, Turkish, Hebrew, Urdu, Indonesian, um, there are, there are, there's a lot of languages to choose from. And if you're doing linguistics, it's, it's really fruitful to try to, to combine that with, with, with some language study, uh, because it really helps you to appreciate um, how languages work and, and, and to, to have insight into a language which is not of the same language family uh, as, as one you've studied before is, is a really interesting thing to do if, if, if you're interested in how languages work. Okay, so if you're interested in studying here, we do have entry requirements. Um, so in the UK, um, the A, A level, the advanced level um, and school leaving examinations, we require A, B, Bs. Uh, so A in one and B in, in two of the If you have a particular issues, um, then we are willing to drop that to B, 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 but you'll have to talk to, talk to our admissions people about that. Um, 
in various uh, places around the world, uh, there are accepted equivalents um, for the um, the uh, levels of, of uh, that we require, and these are um, various op um, op options uh, from various countries. So international baccalaureate, if you take that, um, you need 35 points. Um, if you take the European baccalaureate, you need 80 percent. Sorry, the German Abitur, um, a level equivalent, you need uh, a level two. And if you if your qualifications come from um, anywhere else, you'll need to talk to our admissions people. Or, or there are also standard um, um, calculations um, to which which try to. Um, 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 work out the equivalence of, of qualifications across the world. So please, please, please talk to our, our admissions department um, if if you need some uh, more information about your your qualifications and our entry requirements. Okay. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about language, the kind of things that you may study right at the beginning. I, I know that well. Poss quite possibly, some of you may be doing a level in English language, which also gives you um, a very good introduction to to the basics of linguistics. Um, but um, yeah, just sort of a little little taster of the kind of things that may be covered um, in 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 our in our courses. So um, first of all, about sounds, grammar, and meaning, the basic building blocks of language, as I said earlier. Um, so we need to understand the components of language in order really to understand what's going on in language. So what are the basic components of a sentence and how to wor do words relate to each other in a sentence? This is, this is um, really what, what we're talking about with regards to syntax and, and, um, and, and, and word formation. So um, one of the areas that we study is phrase structure, how um, a particular utterance may be structured and how words go together um, to make meaning. Um, and how you put those, how you, how you put those words together in particular groups uh, can make a big difference to, to, the, um, to the meaning of your sentence. Um, there's, a, there's a book um, that uh, is very famous for this, um, about this, it's called Eats, Shoots and Leaves, and it's got a picture of a panda with a gun on the front. Um, so a panda eats, shoots and, um, well, bamboo shoots and leaves. Um, so that's one meaning of that, of the, of the, um, of the title of that book. Um, but if you put a, a comma after the eats, uh, it might mean that the panda had a meal, shot somebody and then left. Okay, so with that in mind, here's another example uh, from, from Maria. Um, so if you said she fed her piranha fish fingers, um, some people actually do keep piranhas as pets, um, strangely enough. Um, okay, so the simple uh, meaning you might think of straight away, um, what, what we, I, I would originally uh, um, immediately think of, 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 of C here. So she fed fish fingers, fish, fish fingers to the piranha. But um, you could, her could actually refer to someone else, uh, someone who's not named, but uh, may, might have been named in, in a previous part of the conversation. So she, she might fit, uh, have fed an, 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 another woman fish fingers made of piranhas, because piranha is a kind of fish. Then again, um, if she wasn't very careful um, and actually dipped her hand into the, into the fish tank, uh, she might have find, she might then find that her, her piranha fish actually ate her fingers. So we can have a bit of fun playing with language. And I've got another example on the next slide. Okay, so here is a sign that you may see in various places around the UK, um, yeah, which uh, perhaps uh, have more formal uh, parkland. Keep off the grass. So that, the, the scent, the, the, that would seem to be a fairly simple um, or order. It's, um, it's, it's community of purpose is, is, is to tell people to do something or actually not to do something not to go on on the grass but maybe maybe the grass is being regrown because uh if too many people walked over it or it got very dry and it needed to be reseeded okay so this is a two word so you've got a verb phrase and a noun phrase within this within this um utterance within this um order within this command okay so you've got keep off which is a two word verb phrase and the grass 
which is uh, a noun phrase consisting of a definite article, the, and a noun grass. Okay, so you can deconstruct it in that way grammatically. Um, and then you can um, think about an analogous um, sentence. Um, for example, turn off the tap. Um, it has a common it has two words in common with the previous sentence, off and the, and it also consists of a two-word verb verb phrase and a two-word noun phrase. Turn off is what we call in English a phrase or verb because it's it's got both a verb and um, oh, what's that a preposition, I think, <laughs> um, and the tap, which again is a definite article the and a thing, a tap, something which you turn on and off um, in order to let water to come out, let water come out or not, as the case may be. Um, and you, you will see this sometimes in, in public restrooms or bathrooms, um, turn off the tap so that we don't waste water. Okay, so you could turn that round and the meaning will, pretty, will be the same in English, turn the tap off. Um, but if you then uh, turned around the first sentence, keep the grass off, um, unless uh, it's you, you're, you're being a bit really funny, then that's kind of pretty nonsense sentence. And, the, and this context, in this context, the, the, the asterisk is um, in, in means that it's, just, it's just a non-feasible sentence. It's something that um, doesn't really happen in, in normal speech. You see very interesting things that we can uh, find out or, or and, and do with languages right, you know, for, right from the very start. Um, so a little bit more about what we study. Um, we are very interested in linguistic variation and in the, in the in the diversity of languages around the world. And many of us study not only uh, the major languages of the world, um, not only the strategically important languages, uh, but we also study highly uh, endangered or very small languages uh, from various countries, uh, or, or in Chris's case, 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 for example, different dialects of Arabic, as, as, as they're called, um, and from, from different uh, parts of the Arabic language continuum. But um, what, what we know is that Africa and Asia contain the most linguistically diverse countries in the world. And you can see the red, the red spots here are the areas where you get the highest level of linguistic diversity. And we teach languages from all of these areas of the world, go on to the next slide or next kind of point. So these, these, these are particularly languages that are taught, taught by our department, languages, cultures and linguistics, because East Asian languages are taught by an, another department um, that may change in the future. So in our view, these are the world's most linguistically interesting countries because they have a lot of linguistic diversity. Okay, um, and you can see that many of the endangered language hotspots, i.e., the 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 the, uh, the, hot, the the places in the world where there are lots of very small languages which are likely to disappear in in the foreseeable future, um, these many of these are in the areas of the world that we study. But um, when we look at endangered languages, we also look at languages from around the world because we find that there are common processes going on um, in, all, in, all, in all parts of the world where, that, where, people, where people are shifting from one language to another. And that may not actually just be in exotic places, if you like, but it also happens in places like London, where, where a lot of uh, there are perhaps up to 300 languages spoken in London, but many of those, um, many people are shifting across generations from those languages to English. Okay, right, and these are some of the, the endangered language hotspots in the areas that we studied particularly. So why should we study linguistics? Well, we think it's fascinating. We hope you'll find it's fascinating too. Um, I guess you're or in this in this session because you really have um, a, a, some interest in, lingu in linguistics, um, but also because it has many practical applications. And we also we do get asked a lot about career options in linguistics. So you can go into things like speech therapy, artificial intelligence. Um, actually, one is not mentioned here. Um, I've known um, if you use a mobile phone, uh, it's got a dictionary installed, and that has been developed by linguists. Um, I know linguists who work for Google and Amazon on, on, um, on their um, linguistic databases, constantly updating um, how, how your predictive text or can, can work or how uh, the dictionary on your Kindle works, for example. Um, language is also very important for marketing. 
um, there's actually quite a lot of research into the language of marketing, which is very interesting. Um, in law, uh, language rights, um, the, uh, the rights of migrants, um, for example, Chris is doing some very interesting research on, on linguistic determination of origin in, in, in um, immigration cases. Um, many non-government organizations um, find, it, find it very helpful to have people who have studied linguistics and languages. Uh, I personally used to work at Oxfam. Um, I studied French and German at university, and I did use particularly the French uh, because many parts of Africa use French, but it's much, much um, more useful in, 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 in many parts of Africa to be able to use local languages to really get um, to make contact with local people. Um, civil services, again, often use people who um, speak different languages, um, particularly translating um, rules and, 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 and um, uh, agreements from different, from different countries. Um, um, teaching, um, not only so-called modern European languages are taught in schools, but increasingly uh, languages like Chinese, Japanese and Arabic are taught in the UK as well. Um, and also, of course, translation is, is a whole career in its own right. Okay, so why should you study lingu linguistics at SOAS in particular? Well, I mentioned the diversity, uh, the diversity of the languages studied, much more interesting than some other universities who only do French and German, for example. Um, the background of the students and all this, also the staff. Uh, I mentioned we have students and staff from at least 130 different countries, um, and, and at least 50% of our staff and students are not from a UK background, so we have a, a lot of insight in, into what happens in other countries. As I said, we have degree combinations, so you can study linguistics in an interdisciplinary manner, so you can combine that with, with, with insights um, um, from both areas of your study to, to, to reach new heights, if you like. And we have a, a, an interesting range of modules offered. I, I mentioned those earlier. Um, so hang on, I think I have, um, yeah, okay. So right, yeah, sorry about that. So this is the last slide. Why do we study linguistics? Um, yes, we have a passion for it. Yes, most of us have had a lifelong fascination for it. Um, but from, the, from your point of view, they're not necessarily so important yet. Um, we, although we'd like you to develop that. You may get to go to Africa as if, if you study an African language, but that's not really the point of studying linguistics either. Um, but really what we're looking at is to find out how language works. Um, and that's, that, that's the core, really the core aspect of linguistics. So thank you very much for listening to me. I'm going, um, and thank, so yeah, please ask any questions. Um, I can see there's something in the chat. Um, what language languages do we teach? Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop the sharing, um, and open up this to everyone else as well. Okay. So we have one question from um, Samuel. Um, is everyone okay if I just answer that one first? Okay. Okay. The the short answer is 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 no. Um, so. Um, we don't necessarily teach lingu endangered languages as languages as, as for language study itself, as, as to speak those languages. Um, what we do is we, we study the process of language endangerment um, and also of language revitalization. So we're looking at how languages become endangered, um, the process of language shift, but also what we can do to try and stop that, both in terms of linguistic documentation um, that is uh, recording and um, archiving um, languages uh, to keep them um, in a safe place, if you like, for future generations, but also what, what people are trying to do on the ground, what communities are trying to do to, in order to, to, to arrest, to, to halt that process of language shift and also to reverse it. So no, we don't have a predetermined selection, um, but what we do often find is that students will choose a language uh, which is of particular interest to them. For, so, for example, one of the uh, previous undergrads um, did a, a study, a, a particular study on, on revitalization of the Ainu language in Japan, and I've actually got a PhD student looking at that at the moment as well. Another student did a study of Basque, which is an endangered language in Spain, not, a, not an Asian or African language, but as I said, we do actually look at the processes of that in, in, in all the countries of the world. Okay, um, has anybody else got a question? 
Okay, Jenny. Okay, Jenny, uh, sorry, I, I didn't ask you, Samuel, if you wanted to say it yourself. Jenny, do you want to say this yourself or, or would you like me to read out your question? Okay. Okay, so if you don't want to unmute, I'll, 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 I'll say the question and then colleagues are welcome to jump in. Um, okay, so Jenny, uh, I can't remember if you mentioned it. I'm particularly interested in how children learn a language and how learning a second language is different. Is that something you look at? Um, um, Lutz, do you want, you're nodding there. Do you want to talk to that? <clears throat> yes, I, th I think it's a great question. Actually, I was thinking also, also Chris probably has more, more to say about that as well. But one thing which immediately came to my mind is that, that it links to, to multilingualism, which is really a very, very important feature of, of the world's languages. I mean, we tend to forget in Europe, but actually there are so many languages also in London, but in, in many, you know, many parts of the world, we do research. It's, it's really a defining feature of the ecology of the, of the environment in which you operate, that there's just many languages. Um, and, and part of my work, I'm really quite interested um, what the effects of that are when you have the situation where people speak two or three languages, and some of them are first languages, so they are quite very early on in childhood, they're the peer language if they spoke at home. And then you add, add to that repertoire, if you like, um, and then maybe the second or third language in some stage becomes actually quite important. And then the, the influence of second or third language speakers on the language itself. So I'm thinking think particularly of Swahili, um, and, and Chris has you know, a similar work on Arabic, and indeed Yen has worked quite a bit on that in the Chinese context. So, so in a sense, we converge on precisely that question. And then the question of what, what is the difference between first and language, first language acquisition, second language acquisition, and what it means to bring knowledge of a first language, if you like, to the second language. Um, and indeed how maybe also the second language then influence your first language. It's precisely that sort of space which many of us are interested in. And that I don't think we have specific modules on that for teaching, but it sort of permeates a lot of the work we do. So for historic linguistics, it's a really important question, for example. Okay, thank yeah, I, you. Shall I just, uh, just, just to sort of follow up on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, uh, just to sort of echo what Lutz said, I, if you consider the, the um, point that Julia made at the end of her presentation, what, what's the main reason for studying ling uh, linguistics? It's to try to understand how languages work. Well, if you break that point down, uh, an absolutely key component of understanding how languages work is understanding how we come to learn languages, whether as children or as adults. So what you'll find is that um, this question of uh, language acquisition, uh, as we call it, whether, whether the acquisition of first languages by children or second languages by older children and adults, what you'll find is that that is actually at, uh, lies really at the heart of uh, a, a huge proportion of the research that is done in linguistics at SOAS and um, around the world. Um, so we, we will often in many modules come back to this question. We don't, however, have a, a dedicated uh, module devoted to first or second language acquisition, but um, you know, it's 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 almost um, so fundamental that we're you're going to come across it in many of the modules, nevertheless. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, Jenny, again, so would linguistics be better, or linguistic central translation to get a better understanding of it? It's it's Jenny. By by it, do you mean language acquisition or 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 linguistics? Language acquisition. Okay, I would say probably in linguistics uh, translation doesn't really deal with with um, with language acquisition. Uh, translation is more about um, how to how different languages relate to each other and to what extent it's possible to say the same thing in another language and, and the processes you would use to, to, to go about doing that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I, just to say on the, 
on this issue of, um, you know, if you're in, interested in in what Julia's presented and, and you like the idea of coming to SOAS to study linguistics in, in some form, should you do um, the straight linguistics pathway or should you do the translation pathway? Mm -hmm. Well, um, if of course you already know that you're particularly interested in translation, well then you should of course uh, choose the translation pathway. Um, uh, the point is that um, as Julia showed you, once you have a degree in linguistics, uh, there are a number of different avenues that you can go down career-wise building on your um, on the skills and knowledge that you've acquired doing linguistics. A and one of those many options open to you uh, is uh, working in translation, assuming, of course, that you um, have expert knowledge of two, at least two languages that you can translate between. Um, and so the translation pathway really just uh, gives you an option to focus from, well, not from the very beginning, from, from your second year, once, yeah. you know, once we've established the foundations in the first year, that gives you an opportunity um, to, to focus on translation, especially from a sort of career oriented point of view yeah. Yeah. Uh, early on. Um, but like I say, um, there are many different things you can do with linguistics. So if you uh, aren't so sure that you want to specialize in translation, then maybe choose the um, general linguistics pathway, which of course doesn't uh, mean that you've turned your back on translation forever. Um, it's, it, uh, you can always do a master's qualification in translation uh, or something like that, yeah. yeah or, or you could do translation modules as some of your options for, for a general linguistics degree as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just going back to, for, uh, Samuel's got another question. Um, um, so just going back to Jenny's question, again, not on language acquisition and kind of relating that to the individual study projects and also study projects in various of the other uh, modules, because in several of our modules, you get an opportunity to, to, to look at a, a particular area in, in more detail. Uh, for example, my, my module on language society and communication, you're encouraged to do a little bit of, of original research for that as well, and to choose, choose something. What we often find is students come along with a particular interest, but actually over the period of time that they're at SOAS, they, they find out about so many other things that they actually end up going in a different direction. Um, so it's really important to have that overall basis uh, grounding in, in, in the kind of the basics of linguistics first, so that you can make choices at a later stage. And But say you did have a, an interest in a particular area, maybe language acquisition, maybe uh, syntax, may, may, maybe language policy and planning, for example, you um, what you could do is talk to a member of staff who's got the expertise in that particular area and do an individual study project on that. And that's a way of, of developing um, what you've done as part of your basic degree in, into something of, you can, you can either use individual study project to go more deeply into a ticket if you've already studied, or you can branch out into another area or a sub a subfield of, 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 of what you're studying. Okay, so yeah, please talk to us at any at any stage of, of, of your career about about we have we have what's called academic advisors who are there to help you uh, to decide about choices module uh, modules but also and, and other areas of your life too. Okay. Sorry, and, and there was another question from Samuel in the chat. Okay, so would being able being able to speak multiple languages be a benefit for the course? Um, yes, absolutely, because it gives you an insight already a little bit. If you, if you have been learning languages or if you have um, languages as part of your heritage, you already have an insight into, into how different languages are structured and how, and how you say the same thing in different languages. And that's a really interesting um, 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 think, think, you know, a really interesting basis in order to, to, to the kind of knowledge in order to go into linguistics. I actually have, um, um, actually, I don't think we have anyone, not in my classes, who isn't bio-multilingual. 
Um, I mean, this is one of the things about SOAS, it's, it is so diverse and we, and we have students from so many places and so many backgrounds. Um, I, I think I have about 40 different languages spoken in, in one of my modules that I teach by, by, the, by the students who are in it. And that gives us a really interesting range of examples that we can look at when, when, when we're relating what we're, what we're teaching to what happens in real life. Mm -hmm. But so if I can just come, come in there, I think it's really interesting both both this question, but also Jenny's earlier question about the about the um, language acquisition, um, because the the languages we teach, I think all of them are up initial. That is, they they are beginners level, so they don't presuppose that you've done you know, Chinese or, or Swahili at school. Actually, can't you can't do Swahili at school. I don't think. Um, but that that means there's a there's lots of opportunity for language learning, but there's also lots of language learners. So I was just thinking, Julia, when you were talking about the independent study project at the end, if, if you're interested in language acquisition, there's a whole group of people who it would be really nice to work with and, and you know, maybe trace, you know, a cohort of, of Sanskrit students, say, and, and work with them and maybe, you know, ask them about their, 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 their approach to the language learning, the questions of, of identity and the you know, motivation behind it. Maybe talk to language language teachers. I'm, you know, I mean, they are busy people, of course, but they will probably be interested as well. Actually, if if, if you come with a, with a theoretical question, so I think in that context, the, you know, the whole, you know, the wider context of SOAS that there is so much language learning and language teaching going on, um, also helps for, for asking those questions about language acquisition. I think, um, and of course, also if you're interested in language learning, there's plenty of opportunity to do that as well. Uh, and just to add one small thing there, I mean, uh, maybe, you know, maybe being a little pedantic here, uh, you ask, would being able to speak multiple languages be a benefit for the course? I mean, sure it would, but I think the most um, beneficial thing uh, for uh, linguistics um, and getting uh, ideas for uh, what, to, what to investigate in linguistics for your essays, for example, is to be a current language learner. Um, you know, if you if you've grown up bilingual, well, fantastic. That that uh, that that is definitely definitely a benefit. But languages that you speak natively, often, I mean, I know this myself. I I, I only speak English natively, and um, it it. The, my speech in English doesn't really happen at, at, at the level of sort of conscious thought. It just it just comes out, and it can actually be more difficult to uh, sort of scrutinize the way your native language works than it is to uh, do the same for uh, a, a language that you're learning uh, as an adult. Um, so yeah, so the answer is is great if you can already speak multiple languages. But um, it's uh, really, really great to continue to learn more languages or deepen your knowledge of, of languages you already know something about. OK, thank you, Chris. Um, OK, we, we, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so I just um, a question now about Arabic there. Um, for, but uh, Jenny also has a question about Chinese along with linguistics. Can I pass that over to Yen? to um because you're a specialist in, in chinese linguistics oh. hi yes um we do have uh, all our ba programs as um, ba linguistics plus another area so in your case you're obviously interested in learning chinese as your joint degree um i think that uh, at the department of east asian languages and cultures uh, our uh, colleagues in that department will teach you modules um, in Chinese language, uh, which will be rather intensive. And you are likely to spend your third year in some part of the Chinese speaking regions, learning and uh, intensifying your Chinese. But we from the linguistic side, uh, as my colleague Chris um, has told you that uh, we will uh, deliver knowledge related to linguistics. And in our modules, um, more than well, several of us will teach some linguistic phenomena related to Chinese. So you will have the opportunity of turning linguistic ideas into Chinese language studies when you do your independent study um, project. And also we 
uh, will integrate some part of that language knowledge into our linguistic courses. It's a good opportunity to do it here because there are uh, Chinese languages as so commonly taught at SOAS. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I see there's there's two two questions there involving Arabic, which mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy to answer. And just first of all, following up on on what Yan said, so um, one thing one thing that it might be important to explain um, is that um, from from the let's say from a more sort of bureaucratic administrative point of view uh what you should understand is that if you do a degree at soas in say uh linguistics and chinese um it what you're doing is you're doing half a degree in linguistics and half a degree in chinese and um those two halves from 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 the administrative point of view are separate and um are not they don't uh influence each other so that is to say um the linguistics that you do uh in a degree that combines linguistics and chinese is in principle not not different to or doesn't have to be different to the linguistics you do in combination with Arabic or Japanese or any other language. So uh, now, of course, within uh, both halves of your degree, there's there's quite a lot of freedom and flexibility for you to explore uh, uh, the avenues that are of most interest to you. And we would, of course, uh, encourage you to um, take every opportunity uh, you can, and there will be many opportunities to combine, to sort of fruitfully combine the two halves of your degree. So if you're doing uh, linguistics and Arabic, then, you know, we, we encourage you to draw on uh, the, the experience of learning Arabic uh, in your, uh, when, when writing your essays for linguistics and so on. Um, okay. Um, now, if, all right, let me, let me read this question. If you want to do Arabic, it's an optional module on translation theory. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, yes, if, you, um, if, your, if your overwhelming uh, priority is to get as good as you possibly can at Arabic or another language we teach at SOAS, then uh, with a heavy heart, I have to, I have to uh, admit that uh, your, your best bet in that case is to do single subject Arabic or Chinese or whatever it is. Uh, because when you do uh, a joint degree, um, you, you, over the course of the three years that you're at SOAS, um, you don't do more modules overall than you would have done if you had done a single subject degree like BA Arabic. Um, so you will end up doing more Arabic modules if you do single subject Arabic than if you do Arabic and, and linguistics. But there's a very big but after, <laughs> after having made that clear. Um, and that is that. Um, it, it's it's not that you will do it's not that you will do half as much Arabic if you combine it with linguistics compared to if you did single subject Arabic you you will do uh, less Arabic but not you know fifty percent less um, because uh, if you do a single subject uh, degree in the second and third years. Uh, you are basic. You are basically required to do open options, which means um, you, these are modules that come from uh, uh, other parts of SOAS. Um, so not they, they. Those wouldn't be Arabic modules. Um, now, if you combine Arabic and linguistics, then um, there's th then those open option 
module slots will be filled with linguistics, you see. So um, it, 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 it's not that linguistics uh, sort of eclipses the Arabic, not at all. Uh, the other thing to say is, um, I would argue that uh, studying linguistics uh, really uh, ha has very tangible benefits when it comes to language learning. It, it, it massively increases your ability to uh, understand uh, the grammar of the language, basically. Uh, and many, many students find when they're learning a language, be it Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, or whatever, uh, that uh, the grammar is the hardest part. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've seen this, I've seen this with many students myself. Um, it's possible to get sort of to, to feel overwhelmed by the grammar of these non-European languages. Uh, and linguistics gives you the tools uh, to not be overwhelmed, but to break it all down logically and um, to uh, uh, not struggle with learning the grammar. Um, um, also, sorry, Chris, if, yeah. if I may just briefly, of course, if you combine with the language degree, with the full language degree, there's also the year abroad. So, so you would do year one and year two, say, half, half linguistics, half Arabic, but in year three would be full Arabic and you spend time in, you know, wherever they go at the moment, like Egypt or, or Palestine, if we still go there. Um, so, so that's a full year of Arabic and then you come back and still half, half again. That's um, that's very true. That's very true. Yeah. So it's it, that that that's another another that's another way of, of, of showing that you know uh, the language will get more than its fair share when mm -hmm. you uh, when you combine it with with linguistics. So you yeah you won't be shortchanged. Um, but yes, you know I mean you know. I unfortunately, unlike unlike uh, those of you listening to, to this, when I was in your position, I'd I'd never heard of linguistics. I didn't know it existed. If someone had told me it, it it existed, I probably would have done linguistics. But instead, I decided to do uh, Arabic, um, single subject Arabic, uh, and I made the decision to. Um, w once I got to SOAS and did discover linguistics, I could have switched. To linguistics and Arabic, I made the decision to uh, stick to Arabic, and I did uh, linguistics for my masters, which uh, is is of course also an option. But you know, it's really it's really up to you. Um, uh, you will you will definitely learn a lot of a lot of the language, whether you do it as a single subject or you combine it with linguistics. And just to repeat. You know, if you combine the language with linguistics, I think you can be confident that you will get uh, a, a different and I would argue improved uh, perspective on uh, the, the structure, the grammar of, of the language you're learning. Um, now, for the next question. Chris, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, I've had a message from Elizabeth saying we do have to wrap up, we have to finish okay. on time. So if you can answer that question in one minute, that'd be really helpful. I can. If you're a native speaker, of Arabic interested in translation between Arabic and Japanese, you should do linguistics and Japanese. And in linguistics, you should choose the translation pathway. Thank you. Very succinct. Thank you. OK, yes, great. OK, well, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. I really hope that we'll see some of you in the future at SOAS. If you have any other questions, you're really welcome to get in touch with us. Um, we, we, you know, we're very happy to answer questions from, from, from prospective students. OK, one new message. Um, OK, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you for all our, all our colleagues as well for taking part. And I hope to see some of you soon. Bye-bye. Okay,